Hi, dear Tonebase community. My name is uh, Sanil Rejic, and today I'd like to talk about the prelude from the first cello suite by Johann Sebastian Bach. Johann Sebastian Bach belongs to the most important composers of all time. He came from the family where more or less everyone was musician. He was born in 1685 in one little town in East Germany, one little town called Eisenach, and was living in several cities around here during his 65 years long life. I am doing this tutorial today for you from my flat here in Weimar, which is another little town in East Germany. And this flat is just something like 100 meters away from the place where Johann Sebastian Bach was used to live for nine years of his life. Actually, from 1708 until 1717. Bach was able here to perform many tasks. He played, for instance, the organ in the church service and entertained the court with chamber and orchestral music. During his almost 10 years of employment, later even as a concertmeister, he composed three quarters of his entire organ pieces, as well as numerous cantatas and harpsichord works. Johann Sebastian Bach met the young prince Leopold von anhalt köthen in 1716. On August 5th, 1717, one year later, he offered him a position of Kapellmeister at the princely court of anhalt köthen However, Bach did not ask for his release at the Weimar court here where he was living, but signed the contract as a court conductor without prior consultation with the people here in Weimar. When he tried to make up this request, he was arrested on November 6th for stubborn testimony. After his release from the prison in December 1717, Bach was finally able to take up his new position in Köthen and he, let's say, just escaped from Weimar. In Köthen, he was in his 30s, just like me nowadays, and he had the title of Kappelmeister and Chamber Music Director. And he had more time to compose for solo instruments and exactly there he wrote, for instance, his three sonatas and three partitas for violin solo. We more or less know this uh, set of the pieces. Uh, Bach Werk Verzeichnis, 1001-2006. We all know, for instance, the famous Fugue, 1001, from this uh, set. Or Chacona, 1004, for instance, the very famous piece. And we have as well from this period the famous six suites for cello solo, Bach Werk Verzeichnis 1007 2012. Those two cycles together with his lute works belong to the standard Baroque repertoire which we play on classical guitar nowadays. I will just make a quick reminder that. The classical guitar and its system that we use nowadays came a bit later so that we use from this period transcription of music written for another instrument like lute or like I just said violin or like cello or like harpsichord and so on. I'd like to make a quick reminder here as well for everyone that we don't have any original recording, unfortunately, from that period. So we unfortunately don't really know how uh, Johann Sebastian Bach or how his students or his friends back by that time were performing some of uh, his uh, pieces, some of his music, as well as the music of another composers. But what we do have are the books and here I would like to suggest you some of my very favorite books, some of the sources from which I uh, take knowledge, let's say, and take ideas about creating uh, my interpretations. The first book here I would like to suggest you, all those books are in German, 
uh, which I read, but you can find them as well uh, in English or I think also in some other languages like French, for instance. So the first book is uh, by one of the sons by Johann Sebastian Bach, which was, by the way, born here in Weimar, in that house 100 meters away from my flat. So it's the book from uh, Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach. It's called On Piano Playing or Art of Playing Piano. The next one, one of my favorite books, is by another composer and uh, musician from Baroque period. It's by Johann Joachim Quanz, and this book is called On Playing Flute. So we have so many rules and so many ideas there inside, which we can as well uh, use when we play classical guitar. The next book I'd like to suggest to you is by Jean-Claude Weilan. I hope I pronounce it correctly. And it's called The Music of Baroque and Its Rules. And the last, probably my very favorite book from this period, uh, was written by Paul Skoda Badura, one pianist, and it's called Bach Interpretation. I would like to introduce you the first cello suite originally written in G major. We guitarists used to play it in D major, which is with the sixth string tuned down to D, a way more practical for us. Those suites for cello by Johann Sebastian Bach consist of dances and suggests that they were written for a very good musician back to that time, probably for a solist from the Hofkapelle from Köthen. Each of these suites follows the classic French scheme, and at the same time we have one prelude in the beginning. In this suite we have following result, we have following movements. We have in the beginning prelude, we have Alemand, we have Courant, we have Sarabande, so those are three very typical dances. And the end we have the jig, but between the sarabande and the jig we have two inserted, two untypical dances for one suite. In this case we have menuets. Let me introduce you shortly those dances first. So we have, as I said you already, uh, we have alemand. After prelude comes the alemand. It's an easy dance with a moderate uh, tempo written in 4-4 uh, bar and it begins with the upbeat, so something like this. Exactly. Next one, which comes after Alemand is the Courant, and the Courant is one faster dance in a 3 4 bar, starting as well with the upbeat. And here we have, uh, it's very important, here we have to take uh, care of the articulation, so not to play every note um, legato, let's say this way, so especially with the upbeat. <laughs> so on. Sarabande is just like Courant as well in 3-4 bar, but this time is a way slower tempo with uh, bigger movements and uh, in the rule a uh, slight accent should be added to the second beat. Then we have those uh, two menuets, which are just like Courant and Sarabande in 3-4 bar. Those two menuets are creating contrasts between each other. First one we have in uh, D major, and the second one is D minor. 
and the tempo between those two is also a little bit different. The second one is a bit slower than the first one. Something like this. And so on. The second one, as I told you, is making a contrast. So on. After we are done uh, with the second menuet, we should play again the first menuet, something like the capo al fine. And after the first menuet, after the, when we are done with both menuets, we are going to the jig. The jig is a faster dance. Uh, it's in a sixth-eighth bar, and uh, it should sound something like this. So again, starting with the upbeat, and the upbeat is uh, staccato. I'd like to talk a little bit about the prelude in uh, general. Prelude is an opening movement. There were two basic types of preludes in the music of the 17th and the 18th century. The first type was a part of a music piece written by composer. The second type was a short music introduction to the key and character of a piece improvised by a musician during his performance on the stage. So they were improvising. They were uh, by that time and uh, that way they were introducing us the dances or what is coming right after. The most important source on the prelude in the first half of the 18th century is the theory by Jacques Martin Hoteter entitled The Art of Prelude. He presents the difference between the, those two types of preludes. The first type on which we are focusing here today opens a suite, an instrumental sonata or an opera even, or cantata for instance, introducing, as I said already, what will be happening later. The basic rules given by Hoteter on preludes are following. Number one, a prelude should be maintained in the key of a music piece. Number two, it may start from a prime, third, or fifth of the tonic chord, which means if we have our um, D major, then we have here actually in the beginning already of our prelude all of those five notes. We have the prime, we have the third in upper voice, and we have the fifth in the middle voice. Number three, it must end on the first scale degree, the tonic. And number four, after starting from one of the degrees mentioned in the point two, we should stay within the tones of the scale, paying special attention to the pitches which keep us in, in it when we must finish with the final cadence. If a prelude is long, then before we end it, we go through a few suitable cadences, which I will show you today as well. Now, talking about choosing the right transcription, I would like to make you aware that the entire movement, the entire prelude, was written in one line, so that each guitar version consists from this line and from the basses, which were added by the person that did his own arrangement for classical guitar. My suggestion is, uh, just in case, in general, not only here, to check always how does the original looks like. We have today access via, for instance, uh, this IMSLP Petrucci library to the, all those original scores. In this case, I would suggest you to go and grab the original cello version and uh, just to compare and just to check how does it look like. I will today use my own arrangement in this tutorial where I tried not to add too many basses and not to change the main melody line at all. I always suggest to the advanced players making their own transcriptions with their own uh, fingerings, which uh, suit to them the best. Mm -hmm. 